Welcome to Adobe. In this video, we will review several Adobe Identity Management changes along with the related user login experience. We will review the differences between authentication and authorization, and we will demonstrate the user login experience for both the account selector as well as the profile selector. Let's begin with a brief overview of Adobe Identity Management. Adobe Identity Management starts with the creation of business IDs or profiles. ESM stands for Enterprise Storage Model. ESM is a business content platform. These go hand in hand with each other. Let's start with entitlements, otherwise known as a delegated subscription with its associated quota. Previously, entitlements from different organizations would stack up on a single login account. Similarly, all of the storage from all of the different entitlements would take place in the user's home directory. In that model, when a user left and was removed from an org, that storage and the associated assets left with the user. The user storage and the associated assets were no longer accessible to the org. With Adobe's Identity Management Initiative, we are separating a user's login account, where their credentials are, or how a user is known to Adobe, from their entitlement profile, what products they have access to. In the new enterprise storage model, all storage is tied to a business entitlement, entitlements owned by a company. Business entitlements are held in a collective storage, which is owned by the company instead of being tied to the user's login account. So with ESM, we are doing two key changes. We are separating entitlement profiles from login accounts, means that users will no longer stack their entitlements, and entitlements from one organization are held on one profile, and entitlements from a different organization are held separately on a different profile. Users cannot be using both entitlements at the same time. With ESM, where products and quotas are separated out into different entitlement profiles, the storage is allocated for each entitlement profile separately. With ESM, storage belongs to the organization that purchased the subscriptions. This ESM structure enables organizations to deploy collaborative workflows, such as spaces or libraries, while ensuring the organization retains ownership of the assets versus the individual asset creator retaining ownership. Here is a brief summary of the key differences between user storage and enterprise storage models. So today, in a user storage model, all of the user's assets are stored in the user's home storage. Whereas in an enterprise storage model, all of the org assets get stored in an area controlled by the organization, regardless of the user who creates those assets. The home storage for each org member is part of the business directory, and that organizational member is a business ID. It is an entitlement profile. It is not a login account. In the enterprise storage model, since the business has administrative control over all the assets in storage, when a user is taken out of an organization, the assets stay behind with the organization, left in a home storage directory owned by the organization. In USM, you get a single user storage area that is the sum of all the user's subscription entitlements, both the subscriptions self-purchased by the user as well as the subscriptions just delegated to that user by any organization. Whereas in ESM, since the entitlement profile is separated out, the ESM storage area has a total quota for the org, everything the org has purchased. Users do not get specific quota. In Creative Cloud Desktop, a quota is shown, but this is a soft quota, correlating to the subscription the user was delegated by that organization. In summary, the key difference between USM and ESM pertains to asset storage and asset reclamation. In USM, when an org removes a user, the user retains full control over the assets, whereas in ESM, upon user removal, the assets stay in the home storage directory owned by the organization. Let's now review the user login experience. For illustrative purposes, consider the following example, which depicts a more complicated user login experience. In our example, the user has both an Adobe ID and an Enterprise ID under the same email address. First, the user has an Adobe ID or personal entitlement, and this user has also been invited to a team which has given them a team entitlement. Second, the user has an Enterprise ID, which has a CCE entitlement, and here the user has also been invited to a team which has given them a team entitlement. So, the user has two login accounts and each login account has two different entitlement profiles. This configuration frequently prompts the question, how is it possible for a team to have both an enterprise and federated user in it? The answer is simple, it doesn't. It has an entitlement profile and that is linked to the enterprise or federated user. We'll illustrate what this configuration and login experience it looks like in the following slides. Again, here's a quick recap in the order which this configuration can occur. First, the user begins with an Adobe ID. And here, in our example, the user purchased Photoshop. Then, a team is created, and that team invites this user. At that point, when the user accepts the invite, a business ID gets attached to the user's Adobe ID. 
And this means there is an entitlement profile that cannot be logged into directly. Rather, it is a member of a team. In order to log into that team entitlement profile, into that business ID, the user has to first log into their Adobe ID and then select the team entitlement profile. Third step, our company purchases an enterprise product for which an enterprise org was created, the admin claimed a domain, and then added the same user to the newly created enterprise org. At this point, the console identified the user was being added into a claim domain, which is owned by the org, so it creates an enterprise ID with the same email address. Note, once a domain has been claimed, there is no longer a choice to invite the Adobe ID to an org. It will always create an enterprise ID when there is a claim domain. At this point, the user is assigned Photoshop, tied to that enterprise ID. So now there's an enterprise ID login account with an entitlement profile, Photoshop, linked to that login ID. Lastly, yet another team is created. The same user is added to this new team. Now, because there is an enterprise ID on that user's email, it is the enterprise ID that gets attached to the business ID that is invited in this case. In summary, if there's an existing enterprise or federated ID attached to an email, and that email is added to a team, the business ID that is added to that org will be attached to the enterprise or federated ID, not to the user's Adobe ID. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Let's start with the sign-in screen. Here, our user logs in. They type their email address, and this is always the first step, and then they click the Continue button. This brings our user to the Select an Account prompt, which is also referred to as the Account Selector. So here, our users presented the option to select the desired account. Remember, this is the login account, an account with credentials. So in our example, since the user has both an Adobe ID, personal account, as well as an enterprise ID, company or school account, they are presented a choice to select either personal account or company or school account. Note, many Adobe customers may only have an Adobe ID or an enterprise ID only in specific instances such as in today's example, would a user see both account options? Continuing with our example, let's say the user selects personal account. Upon selecting personal account, the user is prompted to enter their password and then clicks continue. And after entering their password, the user is presented with a profile selection. In our example, since the user's Adobe ID or personal entitlement has been invited to a team, just given them a team entitlement, they are presented the option to select either their personal profile or their team entitlement here represented as test org. Let's say the user selects their personal profile. Upon logging into the personal profile within Creative Cloud Desktop, the user sees the applications that have been purchased as available in your plan. So here, Photoshop, Fresco, Photoshop Express, etc., because the Photoshop and other apps listed have been purchased by the user. Note, although the team has given this user license to Illustrator, it does not list Illustrator as available in your plan. And this is because the user logged into their personal profile. Illustrator is shown as apps to try. If the user had instead selected their team entitlement, represented by test org, then after selecting their test org profile, the user sees within the Creative Cloud desktop that Illustrator is listed in available in your plan since the team had given this user an Illustrator subscription. Note that within this profile, the user does not see Photoshop in available in your plan. And this is because the team has not given the user a Photoshop subscription. Remember that in our example, the user wants to use Photoshop, they'll need to be logged into their personal profile, the profile in which the user purchased the Photoshop subscription. Also notice that when the user has selected the team entitlement test org, the user has one terabyte of cloud storage. Whereas when the user selected their personal profile, the available storage was only 100 gigabytes. So for team entitlements in Creative Cloud Desktop, although a storage quota is shown for teams, this is a soft quota correlating to the subscription the user was delegated by that organization. This means that if a team had three delegated users and the team would have a total of three terabytes of shared cloud storage, each user can use this shared total provided that the total storage does not exceed the cumulative three terabytes available to the team. Let's return to the account selector screen. To recap, in our example, since the user has both an Adobe ID, personal account, as well as an enterprise ID, company or school account, they are presented a choice to select either personal or company or school account. 
This time, let's take a moment to review the experience when the user selects company or school account. Upon clicking company or school account, they are presented with this profile selector sign-in. Notice there is no personal profile shown in this profile selector. This is because they do not have a personal profile on their enterprise ID. Remember here, the user has their ETLA or enterprise ID, which has a CCE entitlement, and the user was also invited to a team, Team Org 1. Let's say the user at this point selects their ETLA profile. Upon selecting their ETLA profile, the user sees Photoshop in Available for Your Plan with an associated one terabyte of storage. Again, this is because this is an enterprise Photoshop entitlement, not a personal entitlement. Notice that Illustrator is not an app listed in their available in your plan because the user has not been delegated an Illustrator license by this ETLA org. However, if the user had selected their team org profile, team org one, then upon selecting team org profile, team org one, then in Creative Cloud Desktop, the user sees that Illustrator is available in your plan because the team delegated the user an Illustrator license. Whereas here, Photoshop is only listed as apps to try because the team has not delegated this user a Photoshop license. In summary, there are account selector screens and there are profile selector screens. Account selector is always the first screen presented to the user and is only shown when the user has both an individual account, personal profile, and a company or school account associated with the same email address. The account selector is always shown before the user enters their password or federated credential and logs in. The account selector is always shown even if the user has no paid entitlement profiles on the account they are logging into. And in turn, the profile selector always comes after the user enters their password or federated credential, after the user has chosen their account and logged in. The profile selector will only appear if the login account has profiles from multiple sources. Also, the profile selector can appear when switching from one web page to another, specifically because the profile used in each page could be different, i.e. the Creative Cloud Desktop would recognize the user is logged into a given account, but will ask the user when multiple profiles are tied to that account to choose which profile they want to work in. Now that we've reviewed the possible user login experiences, let's conclude this session with a brief summary of key admin experience changes specific to user profiles. Users with domains not owned by the org will be added as business IDs. After migration, existing Adobe ID user accounts will be displayed with the type business ID. Currently, business ID to federated ID identity switch requires deleting the business ID and then recreating the user as federated ID after the company has claimed the domain. Switching from business IDs to federated IDs when deleting a business ID, the user's Creative Cloud assets can be retained and reassigned within the org by admins through asset reclamation. However, please note, asset reclamation is not available for Document Cloud or Lightroom assets. Therefore, any Document Cloud or Lightroom assets will first need to be downloaded and saved locally by the user. Thank you. This concludes today's user login overview. To learn more, please check out the HelpX links listed below.